Hi Maker Friends, Summer here with Stitch Chister Co. And today we are gonna be making these adorable snuggle slugs. For the video, we will be working with this medium-sized hug slug. If you're interested in the pocket slugs, which are the mini size, or this big jumbo guy that won't even fit on the screen, you can find a link to the PDF pattern in the description below. The PDF pattern will have um, directions for all three sizes of snuggle slug. Okay, so let's jump in. Before we get started on the actual pattern, I wanted to talk about the supplies because for these guys, all three sizes, we use two different kinds of yarn. We use a textured yarn on the bottom, um, like a Sherpa or a fur, and then the top portion is a super bulky chenille style yarn. Um, for all of these, I use different kinds of furry yarns on the bottom, but each one has Bernat blanket yarn on top. And before we get started, I wanted to talk about um, some different Sherpa yarns that work well for the pattern. Okay, here we have Lion Brand Go For Fleece Sherpa. This is the Sherpa yarn that I use to write the pattern and the one that we will use today in the video tutorial. But before we dive in, I wanted to talk a little bit about working with Sherpa yarn and some things to look for when you are choosing a substitute. If you look here, you can see this is technically considered a jumbo seven weight yarn. However, when I was working with it, I realized that it was much more comparable to other six weights. Um, this one, for example, is Burnett Sheepy. And I wanted to show you a comparison of the strands. They're very similar in construction and um, very similar in size. Bernat Sheepy is a tad lighter, but it's very comparable. Now we have another Sherpa yarn that I tested this pattern out with, Simply Sherpa by Yarn Bee. And this one is considered a super bulky, let's get it to focus, a six weight, super bulky. Um, and of course here we have this gopher fleece, which is considered a seven weight, but you can clearly tell that this is quite a bit thicker than the gopher fleece Sherpa, even though this is a six weight and this is seven. So just something to point out when you're looking at substitutes. So here's another substitute. If you don't have any Sherpa available near you or in your stash, but you have gopher faux or similar styles of faux fur yarn, this is a great substitute as well. There's This one is Lion Brand, Go For Faux, um, Yarn Bee has a couple of different faux fur um, options as well. These are also the super bulky six weight. Um, so you can play around. There are lots of really cozy, fuzzy options. A couple more things I wanted to point out briefly before we jump in. When working with gopher fleece or any other type of textured yarn, it can be a little tricky sometimes to find your stitches as you work. So as we work with this, I'll be pointing out, I like to use my fingers to feel where the holes in the stitches are rather than looking to see where you place your next stitch. It's helpful to kind of feel your way along. Now that we talked a lot about your Sherpa yarn, Let's talk about some of the other supplies we'll need. Grab your Sherpa or whatever furry style you're gonna use. You're gonna also want some chenille style, super bulky yarn, I'm using Bernat Blanket. Some scissors, stitch markers will be very helpful and essential, especially when working with the Sherpa yarn. Some 12 millimeter safety eyes, if you choose to use safety eyes. I will be making my slug for the Sunshine Yarn Project. We deliver toys to children in hospitals and shelters. Um, we don't usually know the age of the child who will receive the toy, so we embroider all features for safety. So I will also show one of my favorite embroidered eyes at the end um, of this video too. Finally, you will need your crochet hooks. For the first portion of the slug, we will be working with the L 8mm hook. 
and for the top where you're using your chenille yarn I have always written my patterns for this style of yarn to, to use a seven millimeter hook on it now that Bernat is switching over some of their production and a lot of their yarns are coming out a little lighter weight even though they're still technically a six weight and a lot of the comparable yarns such as Premier, Chenille, and some of the other more popular ones tend to run a little smaller. I have been switching over to give directions to use the 6.5 millimeter hook for the Chenille yarn. You can choose which is best for you. I have very tight tension, so the seven millimeter still works great for me. If you are working with a smaller yarn than Bernat, one of the others like I mentioned, um, or if you have slightly looser tension, you might want to move down to the K 6.5 millimeter. Okay, let's get started. Grab your Sherpa and your eight millimeter. I'm going to be using this Lion Brand Gopher Fleece Sherpa, which actually usually has a pretty nice center pull. So that's a nice little side benefit. Now, normally with amigurumi projects, you will start with a magic ring, typically, or a magic circle, it's also called. But because this textured yarn is a little tricky to tighten the circle down, we are going to start with a chain two, and then using your fingers to feel and find that first chain, we're gonna work all of our round one stitches in this first chain. So we're gonna put six single crochets. I'm actually going to mark that first single crochet so I know where to start round two. If I can get it in there. Okay, so I worked one into that first chain. I'm gonna work five more for a total of six. There's two. five and then six if you lose track counting it's always a good idea to use your fingers and feel and count backwards one two three four five and six and I feel like yep that's my first one that's where I'm gonna start round two in we will remove the stitch marker in round two, we are going to work two single crochets or an increase in each stitch. So in that first one, we're going to put two single crochets into that same stitch. This is going to bring us from six to 12 in this round. So there's my second. Here's my first. You're going to really want to use stitch markers with this yarn because it's really easy to lose your place. So I marked my first stitch of this round. <clears throat> And we're gonna continue around feeling with this hand where your next stitch is. So I worked here, I can feel the hole here. So I'm gonna put two in the next. Now when working with this textured yarn, not only will you kinda of wanna feel your way through since you can't necessarily see your stitches, but it's also pretty typical and I do this. Um, to use slightly looser tension because um, it's pretty difficult to really tighten down those stitches uh, with all that texture in there. So slightly more relaxed tension is okay on this part. You just wanna make sure that you're not going so loose that you're leaving gaps for stuffing to be able to be pulled out. Okay, so here's our end of round two. We've done an increase in each stitch around Here's my first stitch of round two. Now for round three, we're gonna go ahead and just get the rest of the tricky bits out of the way. So the rest of the Sherpa section will be pretty smooth and you won't have to pay quite as close attention to counting your stitches. Um, in this next round, we are going to do the same that we just did in round two. We're gonna increase in each stitch around. So that means we're gonna put two single crochets in each one, starting here. I'm gonna remove my stitch marker. Placing my first increase in that. And 
All right, and then we're just gonna increase all the way around. Okay, here we are working our last set of increases. And now we should be at 24 stitches. And since we're done increasing, it's a good idea to check one more time here and just count and make sure you're at the right spot. If you're a little off, that may mean you missed a stitch somewhere along the line. Um, but as long as you don't have any big holes, you don't have to worry about it too much. Just continue to increase until you have the right number of stitches. So we're looking for 24 here. Just take your finger and count. Two, four, six. Okay, so I've got 24 and I am going to now, for the next 12 rounds, um, just place one single crochet in each stitch, moving my stitch marker every time so I remember where my the beginning of my round is. Um, I also included in the pattern a measurement guideline in case you are using a different type of Sherpa that may or may be thicker or thinner. So that measurement guideline is just there to help you reach uh, the same approximate finish size regardless of what Sherpa yarn you are using. So for this hug slug size, it generally works up to about 12 to 13 inches depending on your tension that affects it quite a bit but that's the uh, range that we're looking for. So in order to reach that approximate size, you're gonna want your Sherpa portion to be approximately eight inches tall. So when we get to the end of our 12 rounds of single crochet, we will measure it just to make sure we're close to on track for the size that we're looking for. Okay, so let's just do it already, right? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start my round four. And I actually don't typically use this kind of stitch marker um, when I am casually crocheting or <laughs> crocheting not on a video. I typically use a piece of scrap yarn and just carry that along with me on each round. And it's actually pretty helpful um, when I'm trying to count the number of rounds that I've done. Um, so however you like to keep track of your rounds, whatever type of stitch marker you use is great. You're just gonna cruise along now. On these rounds that I work only a single crochet in each stitch, <laughs> I call them my cruise rounds because I'm just cruising. I don't have to count. I can just watch TV or show. Um, that's why I like to get all the tricky increases done right up front with this. So I only need about five minutes of <laughs> close attention and then I can just cruise. So I'm gonna meet you back up once I finish my 12 rounds and I will, then we'll measure it and make sure we're still on track. Okay, here we are. I've completed rounds four through 15 of just single crochet in each stitch around. Um, so that's a total of 12 rounds of just that. And now um, I'm gonna measure, I actually already did measure just to make sure I was on track, but now I will measure on camera for you. <laughs> and we're just gonna make sure that we're approximately eight inches, um, which I am pretty much, it looks a little different on the camera, but I am right at eight inches. So that means my slug will work out to be the same finish size that the pattern um, says. If, I mean, if you're smaller or longer, it really doesn't change much. It's just your preference. Like if you want a longer slug, you can have this portion be longer um, with no problem. Okay, I'm actually gonna remove a little bit of my stuffing. I stuffed it so that I could get an accurate measurement but I don't want to be working this next row and like pulling my stuffing through. So I'll just pull that out for now. Now, when I change yarns, I work it the same as when I change colors. And um, I'll show you, I'll back up a little bit and work my last stitch again um, so you can see 
what I do. So this is my last single crochet I need to make. I insert like normal, draw up a loop, and then instead of, instead of completing the stitch with my previous yarn, I'm gonna grab my new yarn, yarn over, and pull through. And now we're ready to go um, working with this yarn. And you can, if you want, you can knot your ends together here on the inside. That's the beauty of the amigurumi. You don't have to worry about um, sewing in ends or anything showing like that. So now we are ready to start on the head, round one of the head. I had to pause for a second. I saw my utility guy coming to measure our meter and I wasn't sure if he was gonna need to knock on my door. <laughs> so uh, we are gonna begin round one on the head using our chenille yarn. And um, for this round, we're working three single crochets and then an increase. And we're repeating that pattern all the way around. So here's my first and I will go ahead and put my stitch marker back. Now that we have a different kind of yarn, you'll be able to actually see the beginnings of your rounds um, a little better, but it's still a good idea to keep that, keep using your um, stitch marker. Oh, and before I forget, I almost forgot. Um, before I start with this, I like to count just to make sure I ended my Sherpa with the right number of stitches. I should have 24. I already counted, um, but you want just want to double check that you finished with the same 24 and that you didn't like miss any or add any um, along the way. So I know that I do have 24, so I'm good to go. I worked my first single crochet. In the next stitch, we'll do another. And then in the third stitch, a single crochet, and then an increase. So three single crochet increase is the pattern that we will repeat for this round. We should have gone from 24 stitches at the end of our Sherpa, and now we should have 30. And if you want to count around and check, uh, that's always a good idea. Now we are going to ride out the next two rounds, just placing one single crochet into each stitch. It's my first one. And we'll just cruise. Here's our last two single crochets of round three. Now in round four, we're gonna begin decreasing, making this head smaller. So we're gonna do three single crochets, um, or a single crochet in the next three, I should say, and then a decrease. So we're gonna do one single crochet in that first one. And move our stitch marker. Two, three, now we're gonna decrease. To do an invisible decrease, we're gonna go in just the front loop of that one, and then a front loop of the next, pull through both of those, and then finish the stitch. So we will repeat that sequence around. Single crochet in three, and then a decrease. And here's our last decrease. Now we should be at 24 stitches around. And we are going to just ride the next round, single crochet in each stitch. Okay, we've completed round five. <laughs> yes, round five. And now we get to stuff our body and move on to the eyes. For this size, we are going to count ahead and mark the fifth stitch. Two, three, four, five. This will be the start of our second eye, and it's just a little easier to mark it ahead of time now. So we'll ignore that for now and count ahead Starting back here, we're gonna skip the next 16 stitches and work the beginning of this eye over here on this portion. So I'm gonna skip two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15, 16. And now I'm going to start in that 17th stitch. I'm going to start my first die. So I'm going to work into that one. That should leave you eight stitches here. So if you want, if you'd rather, um, you can count back from your starting spot and count back eight. And the eighth one is where you will start. Either way, it gets you the same result, the start of our first eye. You wanna pull that stitch. You don't wanna let this stitch stretch really big because then you'll have a big gap here. So make sure that stays tight. And I'm gonna count back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And work into this stitch, a single crochet. And I'm gonna single crochet in that one and in the next seven to complete eight single crochets. This will get me back around to where I started. Okay, eight single crochets in the start of our first eye. In for the next two rounds, we are going to do the exact same thing. Single crochet, just one single crochet in each stitch. Now it'd be wise to use a stitch marker. I don't on this portion just because I count um, in my head. I just count along and make sure I have 16 stitches, but it would be wise. Maybe you should do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> but complete the next two rounds of one single crochet in each stitch. Okay, I have finished that second round of single crochet in each stitch. And now I'm going to, at row, uh, round nine of the eye, we're gonna make an increase in each stitch, going from eight stitches to 16. Work my last increase, and now I should have 16 stitches in that round. And I'm gonna begin round 10 and 11, just working one single crochet in each stitch. All right, we completed those two rounds of single crochet and now we are going to finish the last round of our eyeball working a decrease all the way around. So starting in that first one, I'm gonna do an invisible decrease over the next two stitches. That's one, two, I'm gonna do this eight times. That's the top of our eye. Now we can fasten off and leave a tail to close that opening. So I slip stitch into my next stitch, tighten it down pretty good, and then cut or <laughs> break your yarn, um, leaving a tail for us to close the top of that eyeball off. Okay, one eye down now to begin our Second eye, we're gonna attach a new piece of yarn and we're gonna be placing our first stitch here where we had marked um, with our stitch marker. There are lots of ways to connect a new piece of working yarn. Um, you could slip knot on your hook and then slip stitch to the body. Um, I typically do it this way uh, just because it is a little less bulky of a connection, I feel like, and with this yarn, it looks nice. So, but feel free to connect any way you like. We're gonna leave a long tail. This will be used to sew this middle portion that will be left open here. We'll use this tail to close that at the end. So, leave a long tail, and I'm going to, I grab my yarn and pull up a loop and then I just chain one uh, or pull it through that loop and that secures it on uh, the body. Now I'm gonna make a single crochet in that same stitch and then in the next seven to complete a total of eight stitches for this round. Now there will be four stitches left unworked across the front. We, we worked into this stitch, this one, two, three, and four. These will not have anything in them right now. I've completed my eight stitches for round one, and so now I'm going to begin working 
in this first stitch that I made in round one of the second eye. So working here and making sure I'm not leaving this stitch loose, we're gonna go into this first single crochet. And I'm going to repeat the same steps from round seven through 12 on the first eye, exactly as they were. So here's our little guy with two eyes and now we can start giving him his finishing touches. I will go ahead and show you two different ways of doing the eyes. If you are making your hug slug for the Sunshine Yarn Project, we embroider all the features, so I will show you that next. But first, if you like to use safety eyes, you'll wanna grab your 12 millimeter eyes. You'll have a washer for the back and then your safety eye. Now, when I'm able, especially with this bulky, squishy yarn, I prefer to go through a stitch. This is a little tricky to show on this variegated yarn. But rather than going in between two stitches, you can place your eye between two stitches, but it gives it a little bit more security, a little more for the washer to clamp down on if you go directly through the middle of a stitch rather than between two. So let's see if you can see this stitch here. This is the post, this is the stitch here, and then this is the gap between. So I'm gonna go actually through that stitch. And when I place my washer down, I'm not gonna put it on because I'm gonna embroider these eyes, but you would slip your washer down. And now it, it has the whole stitch to clamp down on rather than being in a gap between two stitches. It's just a lot more secure that way if you're able to. Some patterns it's hard to do that with because the um, it just doesn't line up very well that way. But whenever I'm able to, I like to do that, just an extra um, security feature, I guess. So for these safety eyes, you're gonna wanna place them <clears throat> through the center front stitch in round 12. So this is, or I'm sorry, not round 12, round 10. This is round 12 where we completed an 11 and 10. 10 is gonna be your first round after increasing to 16 stitches. I actually placed this guy too high. Um, so round 12, 11, 10. And I'm gonna go in this front center stitch. If you like your placement, you can go ahead and lock your washers in, securing your eyes down. Now, because I'm doing embroidery, I'm gonna set these guys aside and I'm gonna go ahead and stuff my eyes and the rest of my head and close up all the areas. So I'm gonna get to stuffing. And when you stuff your eyes, you wanna make sure this portion down here is stuffed pretty firmly. That way um, it, it just kinda of helps hold these eyes erect and you're not, they're pretty stable, but it just helps them not be too fl floppy. All right, so we've stuffed it. We got stuffing in the tops of the eyes. We stuffed it here at the base really well. You can add a little extra to the head portion. And once you're happy with your stuffing, we're gonna go ahead and close up um, all the openings we have left. So at the top of your eye, we'll start with those. You're gonna wanna thread your tapestry needle. And similar to a invisible decrease, we're gonna work through the outside loops and we're just gonna go through each outside loop from outside to inside and kind of weave it through here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple at a time just because it's faster. But once you've gone through each of your outside loops, you'll just tug gently so it doesn't break. I don't know how many times I've done that gently but firmly. And then sometimes if I feel like there's a lot of tension there that's wanting to pop that hole back open, I will even work a knot by going in, coming back out, and then going back through that loop that I just created. And that works a small knot. 
that will go to finish will go into the body and pull it through and that knot is not visible so break that or cut that <laughs> and squish it back into shape your knot disappears and your thread disappears up into the eye and then we'll go ahead and repeat that process again then over here for the second eye we finished the eyes now we're going to go ahead and sew this portion between the eyes closed by whip stitching um, through the outside loops again here to close that up. So grabbing the beginning tail that we left at the beginning of our second eye, we're going to thread our needle again. And let's see if I can show this on video. <laughs> Get this eye out of our way. All right, we're gonna go through the outside loop here. It'll be easier to show you when we get over here, but we're gonna go through the outside loop on this side and the outside loop on this side and pull it through. Now whip stitching means we're just gonna keep making that same stitch in the same direction over and over again. So now we're gonna move to the next stitch. Oop, I'm not on here and go through the outside loop here and the outside loop on this side. Goodness, I can't keep it in frame. And pull it through. Repeating that across the outside loop, outside loop. Actually, I said whip stitch, but this might be mattress stitch. I really can't remember. I can't keep the names straight. <laughs> I just know how to do it. I don't know what it's called. Going through the outside loop here, outside loop on that side, and then pull it tight. Finishing here. And you can even, if you see that there's a little gap at the side of your eye, maybe if you left a um, one of your stitches a little loose, um, you can stitch as far up as you need to on the eyes as well. Once you are happy with your closure, I like to secure with a knot similar to the top of the eye. I go into the body and then back out and then take my needle back through that loop that I just created and tighten it down before I take my needle back into the body to hide my tail. That just gives me a little extra peace of mind that 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 um, closure is not gonna pop back open. There's a knot there that will hold it. So now we gotta pick all our fuzzies off because <laughs> there's always a lot of fuzz. And then we can um, start working on embroidering our eye. And I'm gonna show you my favorite method to do round eyes. It's a little intimidating at first to embroider, but it's not too bad once you get the hang of it. And I know you can do it. There are several methods to embroider eyes. This is just one of them. We're gonna take, I like to use worsted weight yarn. You can also use super bulky, whatever you want. I like worsted for this just because I have, it gives you a little bit more control over placement and size. And so I'm gonna make my embroidered eyes in the same placement that for the safety eyes. So I'm gonna take my threaded needle and go from the side, anywhere that's out of the way and bring it out where I want my eye to begin. And I'm gonna leave a tail sticking out over there at the beginning so I can secure it off at the end. I am just going to go up one round and place my needle back in, or uh, place my needle in the round above and then bring it back out where I just came out of. And I'm gonna repeat that several times until I have the size and shape that I like for my eye. Now, if I'm doing eyelashes, I like to do that now or early on, um, just so that they're not, so they're kind of tucked into the eye. Um, so that is something you can do easily by making a couple stitches off to the side to make eyelashes. So just repeating, I can look at my eye and see, I like that. I think I'll put a couple more to the sides to make it a little bit 
wider. And I use my thumb to kind of guide the yarn where I want it to go. But once you have the size and shape that you like, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to go in here and bring my yarn back out where I began and where that beginning tail is. Snip that off. We're gonna tie those two ends together. Double knot that, triple knot it if you want. <laughs> and then we're gonna th re-thread our needle with those ends and tuck those back inside the body. Going back in where we just, where they came out of and then weave it down through there. Bring it out somewhere else and then snip close to the body and it will disappear back into there. Okay, and then I pulled that string pretty tight, so it pulled my eye in a little bit. I can just use, you can use your end of your needle to kind of pull your stitches back out if you need to. That looks pretty good. If you wanna give it an eye shine, you do similar um, technique, but with white. And we're just going to bring it in on the side somewhere, bring it out in the black portion, and then make just, I usually just do one, especially for this size, but go back in to, and bring it back out where you started. And that will just make one little eye shine spot, super cute feature. And in the same way, we're gonna secure these ends together. Okay, one eye done. Now to do it again. Okay, two eyes embroidered lickety split. Not too bad. I got a fuzzy here that I need to dig out of there. <laughs> so to finish, you can just make sure that they're the same size and everything that you like. Again, using your needle to pull your stitches back out if you pulled them too tight when you were um, weaving them in. Now to do his mouth, <clears throat> we will, I like to use the worsted weight again. Um, you can just embroider a smile, a smirk, um, whatever you like. And really the placement is personal preference as well. So in the same fashion, you'll take your threaded needle, come in from somewhere else, doesn't matter where, and then bring it out where you want your mouth to start. For my smirks, I like to go down one and over two, and then bring it out where you're beginning tail is. I used to get so nervous at that last part of snipping my yarn. <laughs> I was always so worried I was going to snip my actual piece. I haven't done that yet, but maybe I shouldn't have told you that. <laughs> um, so there is your snuggly slug. He's super squishy and soft and ready for lots of love. If you are interested in the other sizes um, or some more of details in the PDF pattern, you'll find instructions for um, little treasure pockets that you can put on your slug. There's directions for different kinds of cheeks and eyelids and all kinds of extra stuff in there. Um, so go ahead and check that out. And I can't wait to see your slugs. Tag me on Insta or on social media. And um, I'd love to see your creations. Thanks, guys.